everyone. Welcome to today's session which is on implications of multiple intelligences in classroom. The objectives of today's lesson are to understand the concept of multiple intelligences, to know the historical background of multiple intelligences, to understand how multiple intelligences theory differ from traditional view of intelligence, to learn how to identify multiple intelligences of learners and how to implement multiple intelligences approach in classroom. Often teachers have had the experience of not being able to reach some of the students until teaching is done completely in a different way, providing new alternative for students to express themselves. For example, in a maths class, a student just couldn't seem to understand fractions until the teacher demonstrated the concept by taking an orange and separating its carpal to explain fraction. Because of such experiences, the theory of multiple intelligences echoes in many classrooms. The theory of multiple intelligences challenges the idea of a single IQ. Howard Gardner, who originally proposed the theory of multiple intelligences, says that there are multiple types of human intelligence, each representing different ways of processing information. The idea of multiple intelligences is important because it allows for educators to identify strengths and weaknesses of their learners. And also, Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences provides a great alternative to the popular measurable IQ method. Gardner proposes eight different intelligences to account for a broader range of potential in children and in adults. These eight intelligences include visual, verbal, logical, kinesthetic, musical, interpersonal, intrapersonal and naturalist. According to Gardner's analysis, only two intelligences that is logical and linguistic are usually valued and tested in schools since they are tools to assess academic or scholarly intelligence. The theory of multiple intelligences or MI theory represents a departure from traditional conceptions of intelligence which is measured by IQ tests. Now we will see the eight intelligences in details. Visual spatial involves visual perception of the environment the ability to create and manipulate mental images and the orientation of the body in space. Verbal linguistic involves reading, writing, speaking and conversing in one's own or foreign languages. Logical mathematical involves number or computing skills, recognizing patterns and relationships timeliness and order and the ability to solve different kinds of problems through logic. Bodily kinesthetic involves physical coordination and agility using fine and cross motor skills and expressing oneself or learning through physical activities. Musical involves understanding and expressing oneself through music and rhythmic movements or dance or composing, playing or conducting music. Interpersonal involves understanding how to communicate with and understand other people and how to work collaboratively. Intrapersonal involves understanding one's inner world of emotions and thoughts and growing in the ability to control them and work with them consciously. Naturalist involves understanding of natural world of plants and animals, noticing their characteristics and categorizing them 
it generally involves keen observation and the ability to classify other things as well. French psychologist Alfred Bennett designed the precursor to the modern day intelligence test in the early 1904 in order to identify French school children in need of special educational interventions. Bennett along with his collaborator Theodor Simon invented the first practical intelligence test that is the bennett simon scale. However, modern day theory of multiple intelligences was developed in 1983 by Dr. Howard Gardner, professor of cognition and education at Harvard University, USA. Gardner has written and published several books and articles like Frames of Minds in 1983, which introduced the theory of multiple intelligences, The Disciplined Mind in 1999, Intelligence Reframed Multiple Intelligences for the 21st Century in 1999, which reports the revision of MI theory. Dr. Gardner says that we should place equal attention on individuals who show gifts in other intelligences like art, music, design, dance, etc., which enrich the world we live in. Unfortunately, many children who have these gifts don't receive much reinforcement in school. Many of these kids, in fact, end up being labeled learning disabled or simply underachievers when their unique ways of thinking and learning aren't addressed by a majorly linguistic or logical mathematical classroom. The theory of multiple intelligences proposes a major transformation in the way our schools function. It suggests a wide variety of ways of using music, cooperative learning, art activities, role play, multimedia, field trips, inner reflection, etc. The theory of multiple intelligences has grabbed the attention of many educators around the world and hundreds of schools are currently using its philosophy to redesign the way they educate children. However, in many places education is still imparted in the traditional teacher-centered way. The challenge is to get this information out to teachers, school administrators and others who work with children so that each child has the opportunity to learn in ways harmonious with their unique minds. Gardner's conception of intelligence grew out of his observation that individuals who demonstrated substantial talent in domains as diverse as chess, music, athletes, etc. possessed capacities in their domains that should be accounted for in conceptualizing intelligence. Accordingly, in developing MI theory and its broader characterization of intelligence, Gardner drew upon research findings from evolutionary biology, neuroscience, anthropology, psychometrics and psychological studies of prodigies and disabilities. Through synthesis of relevant research across these fields, Gardner established several criteria for identification of unique intelligence. Gardner's MI theory challenged the traditional beliefs and approaches in the fields of education. According to traditional definition, intelligence is a uniform cognitive capacity people are born with. And this capacity can be easily measured by short answer tests. On the other hand, according to Howard Gardner, intelligence is the ability to recreate an effective product or offer a service that is valued in a culture. A set of skills that make it possible for a person to solve problems in life. And the potential for finding or creating solutions for problems which involves gathering new knowledge. 
and intelligence is the ability to solve problems or to create products uh, that are valued within one or more cultural setting. Let's now have a look at the difference between traditional view of intelligence and multiple intelligence theory. Traditional view of intelligence. People are born with a fixed amount of intelligence. Multiple intelligence theory. Human beings have all of the intelligences, but each person has a unique combination or profile. Intelligence level does not change over a lifetime. We can all improve each of these intelligences, though some people will improve more readily in one intelligence area than in others. Intelligence consists of ability in logic and language. There are many more types of intelligence which reflect different ways of interacting with the world. In traditional practice, teachers teach the same material to everyone. In MI pedagogy, implications that teachers teach and assess differently based on individual intellectual strengths and weaknesses. Teachers teach a topic or subject. Teachers structure learning activities around an issue or question that connects subject. Teachers develop strategies that allow for students to demonstrate multiple ways of understanding and value their uniqueness. In short, according to Gardner, each individual has a different intellectual composition. We can improve education by addressing the multiple intelligences of our students. These intelligences are located in different areas of the brain and can either work independently or together. And teachers could plan their lessons to accommodate different intelligences in their classroom. In this section, we will discuss the benefits of using MI theory, applying MI theory helps students learn better, and how to assess learners using this approach. First is benefits of using MI theory in classroom. In classroom, drawing a picture, composing or listening to music or watching a performance, these activities can be a vital door to learning as important as writing or mathematics. Studies show that often many students who may perform poorly on traditional tests are turned on to learning when classroom experiences incorporate artistic, athletic or musical experience. Thus, teachers can provide opportunities for authentic learning based on students' needs, interests, talents. The multiple intelligence classroom acts like the real world and students become more active and involved learners. Building on their strengths gives students the motivation to be a specialist in his or her area and lead to increased self-esteem. Next is MI and classroom. Here teachers need to ask a few questions while planning to incorporate the MI theory into their lessons and classroom environment. For example, to address logical mathematical intelligence, we can ask, how can I bring numbers, calculations, logic or critical thinking skills? Linguistic intelligence, how can I use spoken or written word? Are there a variety of supplies available for writing like paper, chalkboards, markers, crayons, etc. Spatial intelligence. How can I use visual aids? Are students exposed to a variety of visual experiences like color, art or metaphors? For example, we can bring optical illusion, cartoons, illustrations and videos. Next is musical intelligence. How can I bring in music or environmental sounds? How does the teacher use his or her voice in classroom? 
Bodily kinesthetic intelligence. How can I involve the whole body or use hands-on experience? Do students have frequent opportunities to get up and move around? Interpersonal intelligence. How can I engage students in peer sharing or cooperative learning? Do students have opportunities to interact in positive ways through peer teaching, discussion and group projects? Next is intrapersonal intelligence. How can I evoke personal feelings or memories? Do students have opportunities to work independently and develop self-paced projects? Do students have the opportunity to share feelings in the classroom? Next is naturalist intelligence. How can I bring the outdoors inside the classroom? Do students have the opportunity to go outside? Thus, the teacher can keep these questions in mind while planning their lessons. Now we will see some examples of teaching activities and materials that can be used with these eight intelligences. Multiple intelligence type Verbal linguistic Incorporated into subject matter Books Stories Poetry Speeches Author visits Way of demonstrating or understanding Writing stories Scripts Poems Storytelling Mathematical logical Exercises Drills Problem solving Counting Calculating Theorizing Demonstrating Programming Computers Musical Tapes CDs Concert Going Performing Singing Playing Composing Visual Spatial Posters Artwork Slides, charts, graphs, videotapes, laser discs, CD ROMs and DVDs, museum visits, drawing, painting, illustrating, graphic design, collage making, poster making, photography. Bodily kinesthetic Movies Animations Exercises Physicalizing concepts Rhythm exercises Dance recital Athletic performance or competition Interpersonal Teams Group work Specialist roles Plays, debates, panels, group work. Intrapersonal, reflection time, meditation exercises, journals, memoirs, diaries, changing behaviors, habits, personal growth. Naturalist Terrariums Aquariums Class pets Farm Botanical garden and zoo visits Nature walks Museum visits Collecting Classifying Caring for animals at nature centers In classroom Reading and writing are still necessary components of education and evaluation. Yet, whenever possible, students should be allowed to convey learned information through their strongest intelligences instead of being forced to sit down and write. Next, we will discuss a few authentic and active learning activities that can easily be used in classrooms 
to assess learners knowledge. First is journals or logs. When students write thoughts and actions down on paper, it enables them look back past entries to make connections and apply ideas to the curriculum. For example, students sketch a diagram of a science experiment or critique their own work after a project is completed. Next is performance. Students share talents with various audience by taking part in a show. Example, a poem can be read or plays about drug abuse can be written and performed. Next one is demonstrations. Students show others how to do a process. Example, in physical education, a student shows the rest of the class how to stretch for warm-ups. Then comes product. Students make objects that apply information learned in a unit. Example, students make a video based on a character of a novel. Next is graphic organizer. Here, students use visual formats to gather, analyze and evaluate material. For example, a concept map of a science unit can be created when diagrams can be drawn to compare two characters of a novel. Then comes projects. Students develop meaningful long-term projects that incorporate several intelligences. Example, a student solves a problem through experimentation and presents it in a science fair. The last is exhibits, where students research information and make a display of what they have learned. Example, a student shows a sample of artwork. Posters for a project can be displayed during a parent-teacher meeting. When these activities are done, teachers can evaluate their students' level of proficiency by using a variety of tools including rubrics, interviews, observation checklist, open-ended or guided questions, or teacher-med tests. In conclusion, Developing a classroom that incorporates the MI theory can take a lot of planning and hard work. However, the effort is worth it because, according to Gardner, we want to educate youngsters so that they can cope successfully with a world that is already changed dramatically and is changing more rapidly still. Now that we have come to the end of today's session, let's have a quick recap. So we have discussed today the concept of multiple intelligences, the historical background of multiple intelligences, how multiple intelligences differ from traditional view of intelligence, how to identify multiple intelligence in learners and how to implement and assess multiple intelligences in classroom. Thank you.